Hello and welcome to today's video. My name is Joseph. Today we're going to be covering a day and night system requested by Zine. Um, as a warning, I've gone overboard, I think, just a little bit. But I'll put it up onto the Google Drive so you guys can access. There's a bit more than normal in this one. Um, a bit more of a completed package instead of modular. Before I get into it though, big thank you to you guys. You guys are all amazing. You have no clue. Let's get into it. So, I'm just going to show you what this does before I even explain the programming language behind it. So this here is um, the day-night system I've developed. I haven't imported any kind of cloud functionality. If you want to see that, let me know and I'll work through that one. So what you're going to see here is this is incorporating a few different things I've already done, plus some extra stuff um, like the star system that you're going to see developing in the background there. This is all tied into the time. As you can see, that's attached to my cursor, and that's important. So you'll see here we actually get stars in the background. The stars actually fluctuate, change colors. So you can see here we've got all different kinds of colors. Um, we've got three candles that light and fluctuate in luminosity and change their spheres and all that, and highlight the cherry tree there, our uh, cherry blossom there that I've got. Water's just a placeholder, don't get excited. Um, so that's sunset, and what you're going to notice is when the sunset activates, we've actually got a few different things going on, even in that. So if I just recycle it, you'll see here the sky actually turns an orange-ish color, as you can see. And then that orange actually fades out to a blue-black, and you'll see that as it goes through. So this is all that transition phase as I show you guys you'll notice is just dumb off done off of a very basic um, value system some of the other stuff is not so much like the actual fading of alphas okay now I'm going to show you sunrise so both the sunset and sunrise are actually different so I'm just going to boot into my time system here and I'm just going to change the time to I believe it was 615 so if I boot this up and before I forget to mention, you sh need to actually set the alpha manually. I haven't built a tool to repair that. So that's actually handled under the lighting system. So here, this is the fade value. So I'm just going to show you guys the daytime fade. So this is nighttime right now, and we should start seeing a fade into morning. And what you're going to notice is again, the sky actually goes a pink instead of an orange and as it fades out you're going to see it should transition over to a blue sky in the morning hopefully if it doesn't break on me because i haven't actually checked this part and i'm making an assumption that it's worked correctly so as it continues to transition we should see yep just what i'm hoping for so as you can see everything else fades out we get a nice morning transition there so let's get into how this works and give everyone a bit of a headache so the first critical component to this whole thing is the timing this is important because if you change your in-game time this will affect everything so my game speed factor is held as a separate value and i detach the timer from the rest of the game so in here, you'll see I've just got some very basic seconds, minutes, hours, and a game speed factor. In my step event, I just look at seconds, and in my seconds, this is where the game factor comes in, so everything's done at the ground level. It takes game factor divide by room speed. So if my room speed, as an example, is 60 frames, room speed, and my game factor is 60, it means one second passes... Um, as in game time to game speed. Basically then everything else here trails down the line. So basically once I get 60 seconds, I get a minute added. Once I get a minute, uh, 60 minutes added, I get one hour added. Once I get 24 hours, um, it resets back to zero. The other important part here is as I need to use these factors in other components, I've actually partially detached them using globals as well. So the globals read from the internalized object. So you'll see in here, I actually just have a globals, 
which just holds all the um, detached values I need to pass through to different objects. So, and then all you're going to see under here is just me drawing quite literally um, the values so we can track them. So basically in here, this works off 24 hour time. So we can just change it to whatever value we want in 24 hours and the system will account or calculate for that minus the alpha fade. The next object I developed was the lighting system. And the lighting system plays a bit of an important role because not only does it now need to change between daytime and nighttime, but we actually need a, gr um, a gradient factor when this occurs. So you'll see here, first thing it does is we set our depth to negative five, which is fine. We just need it to be above the scene. And ideally we should be using something like 999. Um, next, I use a temp value, which creates my day night system. And then I add a slave value to that. So it just can reference back here. That will become relevant later. I'll explain it in a bit. So next, these are the values for sunset and sunrise. Both these functions work in the same way, but in reverse of each other. It'll make sense when I show you. So basically, sun, um, sunrise starts at 6 and will finish at 7. And it will actually start at 6.15 and finish at 7.55. Sunset is the same, so 19 is something like 6, 7 o'clock, I think. Um, so 7.15 to um, an end time of 8.55. So again, you can play with these values. Um, the light alpha just dictates the um, state of how dark it needs to be. So if you want your game to be darker, you can change this value higher up. If you want it to be lighter, you drop the value down. And then the um, alpha value here, this fade alpha, affects this light alpha. Then I just draw a surface. Just as a note, that's part of the light tutorials I've done before. Ignore this, this broke it for some reason, and I need to investigate why. So, what have I done in here that's a pain? So, the way this works is because we calculate everything based off seconds um, in-game, this makes for, believe it or not, easier than trying to do it off minutes or hours because we actually get a proper gradient effect and everything else attached to it. So here, the Sunrise system basically looks at is the two hours that we've set, the start and the end hour, correct? If so, we're going to then look at our minutes and our own minutes, correct? If so, it will then proceed. So in our value here, we're taking our alpha fade. We're going negative one, so we're just inverting our percentile value. And then from in here, what I do is I'm quite literally just generating a percentage value. And I know this looks intimidating, but it's really not too bad. So this just pulls the global minutes that the system's keeping track of, and I multiply it by 60 to work out um, seconds in there, and then I add seconds to that value. So I now know my total seconds um, globally. Then from there, I take my starting point from in here. So this just is my starting fade point, and I times that by 60. This brings our start point to neutral zero. And then from there, I can then divide by current value minus um, my start time to again, just level it back to zero. And I'm just again, calculating for 60 seconds, uh, adding 60 seconds, because this is all done in minutes. My next step is basically the reverse. So in sunset, the only thing that changes in that equation is I'm not accounting for negative, um, oh sorry, I'm not inverting my uh, value or my percentile value. Next, I've just got a safety check for my alpha. So this just makes sure alpha can't exist lower than zero and alpha can't exist higher than one. From there, I pass my alpha value over to a global alpha. So then I can work it through other systems. That's now being explained. Let's jump to the draw set function, which is doing a little bit as well because it's handling the light engine. So here we just set our surface value. It's nothing fancy. Within our surface, we clear our alpha. Um, in our game mode, uh, in our GPU set blend, we just do a subtraction. 
Within there, I'm using a with function and object candle, so that will just apply to all our candles. In my object candle, I'm just setting the alpha and then adding a random range to add a bit of a fluctuation value and then multiplying the lot with my global fade percentage, which means as daytime and nighttime change, it will fade naturally. Uh, my circle value here is again just adding some random little movement to the circle just to make it look more alive than just a static image. Um, and now I'm just doing a simple black and white with a false. And then I'm setting alpha back to zero. I set my blend mode back to normal. I finish my reset my draw surface. I then draw my surface. In my draw surface, this is where it's a little bit important. You can see I've used, used the extended function in this. And the extended function basically means x, y, my scale is one, my y scale is one, my rotation is zero. My color is still black, but my alpha is actually my alpha light multiplied by my percentage, which means it will then give me a proper return. My last step here is outside my surface draw function. I then again return back to my candle and I just draw a yellow hued circle with the same kind of random effects. Okay, that's now been explained. Let's move to the next object. So you would have noticed in my lighting system, and I'll quickly just bring it up so you guys can see, I had this, this uh, random creating an object here. This handles the color changes in game. So if I go here to my day night system, my background I should say, again this is not too complicated, it looks daunting and it's really not. So I just set my depth to 50 to bring it forward, oh sorry, behind, just so I know it's behind all my ob objects. My master ID just references back to the creation object, which is the light system. Then I basically go through and I set all my alpha, um, set alpha change. That's just a toggle, which will go zero, one, and return. These are just color sets. So these are just the colors I've set in here. So you can actually modify these. These are just operating off an RGB. In here, this is where it's a little, it shouldn't be too confusing, but it can be a bit daunting if I can't get or get it all on screen. So on here, oh, no, not what I'm trying to do. Bad game maker. Come back into my workspace. So in here, what I'm doing is I'm just drawing rectangles. I'm not doing anything ultra fancy. So I just draw a rectangle. I grab my inverted value here. So this is just an inversion. I draw my rectangle based on the room height and width, and then I set the alpha to zero. Again, I do the same thing. So one of these is the daytime sky, one of them is the nighttime sky. Under there, this is where I get the other fade effects. So each of the fade effects operate off the same idea. So it's just taking an alpha. So here I just check for my time to make sure my time is correct. And if my time is correct, I'll then proceed to the next step, which is is my minutes um, higher than my reference material back in the master? Yes, it is. And it's just gonna then set the alpha um, if it's less than and my change factor is zero, start the change. Now you'll notice that I've actually divided that by my game factor. So that again accounts for the speed shift. So if you make your game faster or slower, this should account for that and prevent any kind of weird functionality. Um, again, then it changes the state to two. Oh, sorry, one. Once the state is set to one, it then does a fade down. Um, that draws it all, so that's just the draw function, and then it resets itself, ready for the next cycle. That's the exact same process. I'm not going to repeat myself because this is already getting long-winded. Okay, so from there, those two states, we've got the lighting system. Now, the star system is something I've pulled from a former project that I was making. So be warned, this is um, very different kind of programming. And basically, for the lack of a better word, all this is going to do is this just generates an array with a set of values and draws stars based on those values, as you can see here. So it generates a color set of stars. So that's just generating colors going through the whole system. 
I don't even have enough screen to show you guys, like so. So it's just going through each of these values and it just randomizes based on the cosmic set of colors for stars. The next step is it just runs a for loop. It draws a sprite based on the set array index off a random value and then sets um, fade values. That's all it is. Like I said, that was just something I've pulled over. But from all that, what we get is this lovely day-night system, as you guys can see. So we get a nice day-night. And if I speed it up, I don't actually even know how fast I'd have to speed it up to get a good kind of time scaling so you guys can see it. So let's go a factor of 6,000, which should be pretty monstrous. I don't know if this is going to break things. I hope it doesn't. Oh, it did break things. Let's try 600. Will that break it? No, excellent. So what you're going to see here is as the game progresses through, we should get a few good cycles. Now, unfortunately, like I said, this is where um, with, get, with time systems, they're painful to work with because they drag out a lot of time. As you can see, I'm already getting annoyed waiting for this to cycle through. So what I am going to do is we are going to cheat and say five hours. No, six hours. And we should see that fade cycle. As you can see, it keeps up with the timing system. And then if we go to 19 hours, we'll get our fade out system. Oh, no we won't because I need to change that other value. So remember in the lighting system, if you're going the opposite way, because there's no accounting for that, I haven't thought about how to fix it, you need to account for it. And then a fade out system for night time. So that's today's tutorial. This will be up on the Google Drive. Go nuts with it. See if you guys can work it out. Um, sorry about the lot of talking on this one because I know it was a bit longer than normal. Uh, I will be working on the next request that Zine has made out of the three. Um, and a massive thank you to you guys. You guys are all amazing. And without you, the channel wouldn't be what it is. So stay awesome and I'll see you guys next time. See you later.